and we're starting our second installment of this series where we're going to talk about supernatural supply. Somebody says supernatural supply. It's when God supernaturally supplies your needs according to his riches and your glory. Anybody wants that? Okay, I'll take it for you in Jesus name. Let's open Joshua chapter 5 verse 12. Then manna ceased on the day after they had eaten the produce of the land and the children of Israel no longer had manna but they ate the food of the land of Canaan that year. And so we see that Israel comes from Egypt and God delivers them from Egypt, takes them through the, through the wilderness for 40 years where he feeds them with manna and manna was the angel's food. Uh, it started as an angel's food and then it, it turned out that Israel started calling it worthless manna. Because see you know everything that starts out miraculous in your life you get used to it and then you call it worthless. Kind of like your spouse sometimes say it's a blessing and then afterwards you're saying you know what it's not good your kids oh it's a great blessing but then they start driving you crazy your job you start thanking God say Lord thank you for my job and then you say I can't stand this job yeah. have you done that thank you for my car I can't see I can't stand this car I can't stand this house and that's how manna was Israel was thanking God for it in the beginning but then they were complaining about it and they were calling it worthless we have to learn to always appreciate God's gifts for our life and never become so familiar that we call them worthless somebody say amen and so Israel had manna for 40 years and then this is what happened. They entered the promised land and the scripture says that God does not give them more manna in the promised land. He actually stops it completely. He removes manna from the menu. It was no longer available. And manna was not the only thing that was removed from the menu. God also removed Moses from the menu. And God removed the rod. Somehow rod never made it to the promised land. The rod that split the Red Sea. The rod that brought the water from the rock. The rod that brought the miracles and all of the great things did not make it to the promised land. This tells you there are things in your life that will help you to get to here but not there. And you have to learn to part ways with things in your life they are not supposed to take you to your future. They are only supposed to help you to get to your present. There are people in your life that will help you to get here but they will not be capable to bring you there. Don't be mad at them if they stay there instead of taking you into your future. For us as a church, when our church started, our pastor, he had a vision to see people come to know Jesus who did not speak Ukrainian or Russian because at the time that's the only language we knew. And from the beginning when he prophesied into us that we will have a church where people come from the community, from different cultures, ethnic backgrounds and different past. He also prophesied we will have our own building. Now at that time, which was about 17 or 16 years ago, our church didn't have a bank account, our pastor wasn't licensed and we did not have money. And so to have a building, when we don't speak English, we don't have the resources, we don't know what we're doing, it was impossible. And my pastor, he believes in the impossible. He kept saying that and then he went in. We found a building. He found a building across Pasco High. This building was being sold and I thank God we never got that building because it wasn't as good as this one. And as he went to the Assemblies of God to ask for them to give us a loan to get that building across Pasco High, Assemblies of God said we have our own building we're trying to sell. You want to buy our building? Of course we said yes and this is that building. It used to be uh, owned by the Faith Assembly and they sold this building to us at that time for $300,000 which is nothing <laughs> in the money right now. When we got this building it took us a year to find the amount money for down payment. It took us a year not only to find money for down payment but also to get all of our paperwork done and so we moved in and you know we're people of faith. We come in before even we have the papers we say it's ours. We posted a banner right here that says this is our building. We opened this building up before God, invited bishops and pastors and dedicated it to us and the Lord. <laughs> it wasn't ours yet. To cut the story short, in the process of this, a government school loses their facility, a Benton, Benton, Head, a Benton Head Start. They lost their facility so they needed a place to rent. And during that time, somebody told them that there is a vacancy in this facility and they can come and rent this place. So they came and through the translator, they told us that they wanted to offer $500 for rent of this facility. 
Now we're immigrants. We don't. Five hundred dollars is good money. So we told them that's going to be five hundred. So we told them it's going to be five hundred dollars. They said we can't pay you five hundred dollars. We have to have an appraisal and we have to have people come in and inspect the building. And based on that, we'll tell you how much we can pay for rent. So we kind of got scared a little bit. We're like maybe they'll pay us less. The appraisal came in and the Head Start people met with our pastor and their team and they said we can't pay you $500. We're like man we knew it. That appraisal should have not came in. They said we can only pay you two and a half thousand dollars. We're like well since you insist we'll have to go with that then. And the Head Start has been in this building up to next month paying each year increasing their monthly payment I think by five or seven percent and so they've been paying for all of our utility bills our mortgage and everything else so in the last decade or so we have not really paid for this building it's been paid for by someone else God did it on purpose because most of our church was very young and young means poor <laughs> so God knew to help our vision to go further he needs to uh, help us right now we have a lot of older people who have jobs and most of our youth now have jobs so but at that time our tithing and our offerings there was no tithing and offering we had to as a church pay that the youth comes to church because there was no money for gas and God provided Head Start to be like manna for us in this process but something shifted with our church as it happened with Israel is God stopped the manna it wasn't because God was punishing them it's because they matured and they came to a new season where now they were eating from the produce of the land and as some of you know the wonderful head start has been a blessing of God for our church is no longer going to be in this building they didn't get approved for funding there's other stuff but the real reason why they are moving out is because we need more space the real reason why we're moving out is because there are people who call this church home who's going to start tithing this week. The real reason they are moving out is because we are no longer teenagers who are using our parents money to get to church. We have our own jobs now. We have our own careers and we now can support the church instead of depending on the government. Can somebody say yes? It's like one pastor who came to his church and he said I have a good news and a bad news. The bad news, the roof at the church is leaking, we need a new roof. The good news is we have the money. They are in your pocket. <laughs> God has a way to help this ministry go further and that way is you and me. Amen. And this is where things got quiet. Everybody was saying amen, praise God. As long as we were talking about getting something from the Lord but being used by God this is where things get quiet. Do not worry. We're just the beginning. <laughs> I want you to see this, that Moses dies, manna stops, the rod stops working. Yet the hope of the promised land does not stop. When Moses died, rod stopped working and manna stopped. God did not come to Israel and say, well guys, this is the best I could. I brought you close. My homeboy Moses is gone manna stopped ran out of manna y'all ate for 40 years you completely bankrupt my heavenly refrigerator manna is gone the rod ran out of all its power and so guys this is as close as i could get you we are done in fact israel never once complained or whined or got discouraged that three most important things in their life that helped them for 40 years are gone now moses manna and the rod israel smooth transition go from the death of Moses to Joshua who's not as powerful as Moses who doesn't go up the mountain and fast for 40 days without water and food Joshua who doesn't talk to God face to face God Joshua he's just a little boy he was an usher in the tabernacle Joshua was just make sure people get there on time and Moses leaves Joshua was not Moses there was no man and there was no rod but the promise of the future land was still intact I want to tell you something right now when your Moses dies your hope for the future should not die with him if one job you had that was a source of income for you stopped, God's hope and God's promise for your provision does not stop. 
Maybe you had a relationship where the husband was there and he was providing for the family and today there is no more husband. Maybe he passed away and today you're looking and you say, how can I go into my future when Moses is dead? Listen, Moses' death is not the end of the promised land. Actually, it's the dawn of the promised land. I am not in any way indicating you should kill your Moses. All right. I don't want you to go to your husband and say, honey, you gotta go. Why? Because I'm waiting for Joshua. <laughs> the devil is a liar. Adultery is a sin. Okay. <laughs> An affair is a sin. We're not talking about that right now. But we're talking about if you found yourself in a situation where your business did not make it through, where certain idea you were hoping to really make you money or to bring you prosperity and it's not taking off the ground and it feels like man this is tough, the hope and the promise of God is dead. Listen, never attach God's promise to an idea. Attach it to Him. He made the promise, He is responsible for the promise. Never put all of your egg, eggs in one basket. Never make people the rug you stand on. You know sometimes people say things like well I felt like the rug was pulled from under my feet that's your problem never put anybody under your feet as a rug people are scaffolding when they are removed the wall still stands when people walk out of your life Abraham and Lot leaves Lot, word Lot is veil that means you can see more clearly when Lot leaves you don't weep and veil you have a veil removed from you and you have to see clearly you have to be a person of hope no matter who leaves no matter what dies, my future is not attached to those people, it's attached to God. No matter how talented and how great certain people are in your life or even in our team or myself, when I am gone, someone else is gone. God's purpose for this house is not attached to Vlad. It's not attached to Malachi. It's not attached to Ilya. It's not even attached to you as special as you are. It's attached to him. He builds this church. He grows this church. He leads this church. He is the God of this church. Can somebody say amen? Your job is not your source. There is one source, his name is God, Jehovah Jireh. It's not your job, it's not your education, and it's not your diploma, and it's not your connection. The first point is this, new season, same source. Even in the new season, you must understand your source is the same. Right now as a church, we're entering a new season. Even new season financially. Even new season in how much of this facility we're gonna use. But as we are in the new season, we still have the same God who was with us 15 years ago, 10 years ago, who led us church, led our church up to this point. Can somebody say amen? I want you to write down uh, under point number one. You are finished with manna, but God is not done with you. When manna stopped, God didn't stop with Israel. Israel stopped with manna. When Moses died, God didn't stop with Israel. Israel was done with Moses. When the rod stopped being effective, the power of God didn't stop. Israel was done with the rod. God was not done with Israel. When Head Start leaves, we're done with Head Start. God is not done with us. When we have anointing, when we have prayer line without anointing water, we're done with the anointing water. God's anointing is not done with us. If your husband left, you're done with him. God's not done with you. If they fired you from your job, you're done with that job. God is not done with you. If that job is not enough to supply for your needs, that probably means you're done with that job. But God is not done with you. Never see the stopping of manna as God saying, I'm done with you. No, 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 no. It's you done with it. God's not done with you. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. When Elijah, when Elijah came to a brook and the Bible says that ravens were bringing him meat, which is supernatural by the way, because ravens don't share their meals with their children. For ravens to share their meal with Elijah is supernatural. And they, they brought him meat, they brought him steak and Elijah was drinking from the brook but the Bible says the brook dried up. It was a blessing of God a year ago but now it's dead. And Elijah didn't go in, Father God, Father God, breathe on this brook, produce, let the water flow, let, it, let, let the wind flow, let the water flow. No, no. Elijah realized that the brook is dead, the stream the river is not. 
my river is God my brook is my job my brook is my career but my river my source is God you're done with the brook God's not done with you it has to be imprinted deep inside of you when seasons shift in your finances that you are done with it God's not done with you the devil will sit on you and simply say oh see God is done with you listen you failed you're done you, your, your best days are over it's over tap out but listen you tell that devil I'm done with you 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 and I'm done with you he is not done with me somebody give God a praise right now somebody give God a shout right now God's not finished with you touch your neighbor say he's not done with you touch your other neighbor say he's not done with you God is at work God is at work in Jesus name number two I want you to write this down new season means new sacrifice Israel has stepped into a new season but God was still the same Moses wasn't there but God was there the rod wasn't there but the ark was there Israel stepped into the new season there was no more manna but God's presence and God's provision was still there new season new sacrifice Israel didn't really sacrifice in Egypt because when things are taken from you by force it's not a sacrifice when you have to pay for your tickets that's not a sacrifice you didn't sacrifice to the government the devil is a liar okay you had a ticket that's not a sacrifice it was taken from you you didn't give it willfully so Israel kind of lived like this for a long time until one day they got out of Egypt and God blessed them by Egyptians opening up their hearts and paying them back I actually heard a lawyer who from Egypt who was suing Israel for robbing the nation of Egypt because when they were getting out of Egypt and of course he lost because the Jewish lawyer uh, sued them he says they were not actually robbing Egypt they were getting their payment they were getting their salary back from Egyptians who would hold it from them for 400 years and so God paid them back and they walked out of Egypt things were great but Israel didn't really learn how to sacrifice they took the money that they got from Egypt and quickly instead of giving it to God they made a cow out of it and it, it wasn't a cow that produces milk it was a cow they worshiped and so you could see that they didn't know how to handle money properly they didn't know how to invest it they didn't know how to give it so what they did and not only they wasted it they actually made an idol out of it a lot of people a lot of people when you are a slave in your mind about finances you worship money instead of worship with money there is really two things you're gonna do with money worship with it or worship it and Israel first worshiped it but later on in the promised land they learned how to worship with it how do I know that because when they enter the promised land and God says you guys are about to conquer what you've been promised and this first city that you are going to attack is going to be called Jericho and this Jericho when you enter it I want you to take all the good out of this Jericho and give it to me all the bad kill it burn it and destroy it now imagine you are an Israelite you've just been surviving for 40 years you finally have a dream of having your home, of having your yard, your vineyard, your well, having like three sheep, few cows and some pigs and running around, your farm, your dream coming true. You're seeing that with your eyes and as you are entering that, God says, by the way, I know you're excited to possess your possession. I know you're excited to have this promise. Um, the best things from the first city, give it to me and the rest of it, burn it. You're like, for reals Lord? uh what about me who's gonna take care of me and i want you to see this none of the israelites were objecting to god none of them were like god why because see when you have a new mindset you see sacrifice not as god taking something from you but as your opportunity to put him first in your life and that's exactly what israel did they gave God their Jericho the first city of the promised land they offered it to God why do we put God first in our finances write this down when you tithe when you give God the first what you're doing is you're acknowledging that you know who is the source of your blessing or in other words it's an acknowledgement where your blessings come from 
that your blessings come from God. They don't come from your strength. They don't come from your connections. They come from God. Amen. When you put God first in your finances, you're saying, I'm not buying God's blessings. I'm fact actually, in fact, I'm acknowledging that He is the source of my blessing. Sometimes we forget that. And I believe God reminds us of that. See Israel, there was one guy who decided that he did not need to put God first and he could, you know what, cheat the system. He could take what he wants and say, well, this whole giving thing is for them. I need money. I need me some Babylonian garments. I need me some gold. I need me some silver. I don't have time for all this. God is doing just fine. I saw the priests wear kind of, what kind of garments they wear. I saw how much money they have in the treasury in the tabernacle. God doesn't need that money and he took it and put it under his tent and God taught him a lesson in the next city and this was the lesson. It was a small city which they should have conquered like this and they were defeated and 36 soldiers died. What was the lesson? All of your victories don't come from you. They come from me. Never let God remind you of that. When you put God first, you're saying, Lord, you don't need to remind me that my victories come from you. I know that. I'm reminding you that my victories come from you. Because if God lets me be beaten by a city of I, by a small little city, I don't want that. I'll rather start with the city of Jericho saying, Lord, I know that you are my source. Not my cleverness, not the fact I never did drugs, not the fact that my driving record is clean, not the fact I've never been in jail, not the fact I come from a good family that taught me how to manage money, not the fact that I plowed through Dave Ramsey classes and Robert, Robert Kiyosaki's books, not the fact that I don't waste money but I invest money. None of that stuff is the source. All of that is the channel you are the source my blessing comes from you God and that's what you remind God of come on somebody uh, we went out for a dinner with a with a couple from our church and this young man shared a testimony of his co-worker who is his friend and he goes to a local church here in town and he would go to the church all the time but tithing wasn't his thing he was kind of a tipper he would tip God tipping is kind of like if you feel good you're just gonna give a few bucks you look at your wallet, oh you have uh, five, okay five to God, 20 from, for the McDonald's afterwards or, or some other meal. And so he was kind of like irregular. It was all about the heart for him. It has nothing to do with, with tithing. He wasn't a tither. Until he had an accident in which supernaturally he escaped death. He was supposed to be dead in that accident but he didn't. No problem with him at all after that, that accident. He sat in the church and God started to convict him that listen you're not being responsible and you're not putting me first even though I protected you. He got so convicted with his wife he decided to put his life straight and decided to tithe faithfully. Tithe first, not tithe afterwards, not see if he has enough but tithe in the beginning. As he started to tithe him and his wife also signed up for Dave Ramsey's classes of Financial Peace University. They started to pay off their debts. They started to you know focus on paying off their mortgage, saving money also for their kids college and he came and told his mother-in-law he's he told his mother-in-law he says hey i'm letting you know that this accident shook me up i became faithful tither we started to take care of our finances and we we're paying off our home and they had 128,000 mortgage left on their house two days later his mother-in-law comes with a check of 128,000 dollars and pays off his mortgage this is a good time for every man to say, Lord, send me the mother-in-law. <laughs> All I need in my life is just a good, rich mother-in-law. <laughs> and those of you mother-in-laws who are here and you have money, may the Lord move on you. <laughs> God did a miracle. When you put God first, you're acknowledging where your blessings come from. The second reason why we put God first is that one touch of God's favor is more than years of our labor. When you're putting God first, what you're saying Lord is this, one touch of your favor. It takes one person to write a check and a lot of your financial problems can be gone. It takes, it takes about 15 to 30 years to pay off $180,000, $128,000 mortgage but God can do it with one check. God can do it in your case with one check. You know how long it takes to build a house, how long it takes to pay off a house, but God gave houses they did not build to Israelites in just simply one spoil in one victory. I want to tell you something, when you're putting God first, not only you're acknowledging you're my source God, but you're also saying God, one touch, you can 
and all of my finances, financial problems will be gone. Lord, you can just touch my case and thousands and millions of dollars can come into my life. It's not about money, but let me tell you something. God touches it, stuff can happen. Come on somebody. God can just type a wrong number or a wrong zero on the computer and money can be added to your account. It's just zeros. How hard is it to add a zero on the keyboard? You may say, well, there are systems. Yeah, did you remember that there is a God who created systems? And created them in just split seconds? This same God can do miracles. I watched this week testimonies as I was running on the treadmill. I was watching testimonies of people who get supernaturally dead wiped from their accounts. I'm talking about like eight, nine thousand dollars. They received prayer. The next day they went and they looked at that account. One particular lady not only had the whole debt wiped out, her credit score supernaturally went from the lowest to the highest. She kept checking it every week just in case there's no glitch in the system. Until this day, everything is fine with it. It's just God just messing around with the computer system. See, when you mess around with the computer system, stuff goes bad. When God messes around with the computer system, stuff goes good. Somebody give God some praise in this house. Lord Jesus, mess up with the computer system. I receive. When I acknowledge God, when I put God first, not only one touch of God's favor can do more than years of our labor, but one more thing that is important to notice is that all of your life, will soon be reduced to only a dash. Yes, you don't have to give all of your money to God, but you have to live with this awareness. You can't take any of them with you to heaven in your casket. You can't take any of you, any of them with you to heaven. I love going sometimes to cemeteries, but not in the night, only during the day. And I remember we were in Massachusetts State in this couple's house and across their, their street they had cemetery. I went for my prayer walk and I went to the cemetery. Don't, don't get wrong ideas, okay? I wasn't there trying to communicate to the spirits. Just talking to the one spirit. But as I was watching, I saw different people and they started to kind of almost relive. Imagine these people's lives. They worried about their mortgage. They tried to pay off their phone. They tried to get the latest, the newest, the coolest, the greatest things 20, 40 years ago. They were focused so much on that and I'm looking at them and I see their whole 80 years, 60 years, 70 years, 40 years reduced to one fat dash. Think about it. Everything you're concerned about, everything you worry about, you can't take it home with you to heaven unless you send it ahead of you by investing leveraging or using it for the kingdom of God. Always live with that awareness. When the devil sits on you and says simply don't give, don't be generous, uh, don't put God first in your finances. Remember when you put God last, it'd be kind of awkward when you come to heaven and you say Lord can you let me in and God said well you've been always pushing me off. We don't want to live like that. We always want to put God first. He's not there to take anything. He wants to be first so that our eternity is spent in His blessings because of what we give here on earth. Can somebody say amen? amen. When we tithe, church, when we tithe, we put God first. Secondly, when we tithe, we put fear last. When we tithe, we put fear last. People don't give their finances for two real reasons. One, God is not first. Number two, fear is first. People say sometimes, Vlad, you don't understand. I don't have money to tithe. That's not the case. The widow who didn't have anything when she gave the last and Jesus complimented her. Like I would, if I would see a widow in our church who I know has no money at all and she has last $50 and she stood there in the lobby and gave $50 in the offering basket, I'm going to tell you something. I would find the key, open that thing up and give everything that's there back to her. I would go and find money and give to, I would never stand there and say, awesome. That's brutal and Jesus stands there she gives everything and he says you know guys this woman she gave more than anything why because God never looks at how much you give God looks at how much you have left after you've given and she had nothing left and Jesus says that is awesome why because on this earth life will be reduced to a dash anyway but she is investing into the future did you know that she gave into the temple that was corrupt the very temple Jesus turned the tables the very temple where people were hypocrites and Jesus said what she gave matter. If I would have been Jesus, I would have been like, woman, don't give money to the temple. They're corrupt. They're going to kill me. I'm God and they're going to kill me. 
take the money away give it to my ministry <laughs> see some of you your excuse for not giving I'm not giving why I'm just not sure where the money goes I think pastor takes all the money I saw what he drove I'm pretty sure he takes all the money oh, really it's funny how when you Starbucks when you go to Starbucks you never wonder where the money goes you don't buy your six dollar drink that has half of it ice and you're like I wonder where does the CEO spend the money I can tell you where he spends the money but you're not gonna like it yeah. but when it comes to the church the only time where you actually wonder where your money goes when your money actually goes to something good but where your money goes to something bad you don't even think about it why because the devil is a liar Some religious demons are gonna pay today, gonna suffer today. Some of you came in today, man, you're already not feeling comfortable. It's completely fine. <laughs> We're gonna keep it real today. We're gonna keep it straight. I'm gonna tell you, I believe this, I preach it, I live it and, and I'm not ashamed to talk about it. You may say, well, Vlad is money. I brought a new guest today. Um, I, I like what Mario Murillo said. One guy went to Africa and he says that I went to Africa, poor country and I couldn't talk to them about giving because they were so poor and Mario asked him back he says I'm pretty sure you couldn't talk to them about healing because they were so sick huh oh. hmm. <laughs> the reason why we don't put God first in our finances is because we're scared you know what we're scared of he won't come through it's really fear fear is bondage faith is freedom fear does three things in finances one it keeps you away from giving number two it keeps you away from investing and number three it keeps you away from enjoying your money I'm all for emergency fund I'm all for having a safety net it's all important it has its place but if you live your life by fear and you're saying today Vlad the reason why I don't tip I uh, the reason why I don't tithe but I only tip is because honestly I'm afraid I'm afraid that I will not have enough well I'm sure I'll not have enough well according to your faith may it be done to you don't live like that when you tithe what you're saying God is I trust that the rest of the 90% that I have you will bless it and not only I will have enough to pay my bills I will have enough and more than enough because I am believing for your supernatural blessing can somebody say amen don't live in fear in your finances because fear while the fear tells you today oh you know what if you're afraid to give so you can get rich fear is lying to you you will never get rich because you would hold from God because this fear that holds you back from giving today tomorrow it will hold you back from investing tomorrow fear will paint the worst image possible about an investment opportunity and you will stay away from it and the day after the fear will hold you back from enjoying the money that you have and you will be keep saving for emergency oh and you'll be surprised how they will come on time why because you prepared for them God doesn't want you to work for your money so you spend them on emergencies God wants you to spend your money on your family on your wife on your kids on yourself don't get me wrong emergencies happen but I don't want us to live our life saving for them preparing for them and waiting for them I don't want us to live our lives saving our precious money, the one that we work for, for hard for so that we can, God blesses us so that we can invest, so we can give and so we can enjoy our resources with our families. But when you live in fear, you start to do this. What will other people think? I know I have extra, I've been faithful, I've been a giver, I've been investing properly and if I buy a new car, what will my family think? You know that it doesn't matter what they think. I tried to pay utilities with people's opinions. The payment never went through. Never went through. It always got stuck. If they, their opinion cannot pay for my bills, it won't keep me from sleeping or enjoying my life. And it shouldn't keep you from yours. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? New season, same source. New season, new sacrifice don't be afraid to sacrifice see when we tithe we attract God's blessing but when we sacrifice we attract God's miracles why because every time you sacrifice you become a miracle to someone before a miracle comes to you I asked myself this question 
because I did not see God's miracles in my finances until four years ago. I saw God's blessing in my finances. This is what God's blessing was. I was able to save, I was able to invest, I was able to make little but make much out of it. I was able to see that that money that I work for work for me. I was able to use every square footage of my house and leverage it for rental income. I saw God's grace and I saw God's blessing but I did not see miracles. I heard people get up and say things like God can do miracles in your finances and I'm like I always felt fishy about it. I was like I'm like no you're just lazy. You're just waiting for God to do something that you should do. I always found an excuse in my mind but in reality I did not experience those miracles because I only experienced blessing until something happened. And I'm going to share something with you. The reason why I never experienced miracles from God I actually was never a miracle to someone else. There's not one person in the world at the time who could have said to God, thank you for Vlad because I got a $10,000 car. It was given to me as a gift. There was not one person in the world who could say that. There's not one person for whom I became a miracle. No wonder they never came to me. And when miracles started to happen to me, but let me tell you, before that I became a miracle to someone else. Yes, yeah, sometimes it was little. Sometimes it was an iPhone. There was 600 bucks and instead of selling it, I blessed somebody. Sometimes it was washer and dryer. Sometimes it was furniture. Sometimes it was a PC laptop. Sometimes it was simple as something in the kitchen, a coffee maker. But I just made a decision. Everything in my house, including a house, one time in my life, I will give it away. And I've went through everything except the house yet. And the reason I cannot give the house is because somebody needs to pay for it first. <laughs> Some of you in here. In Jesus' name. <laughs> sow into the good soil it will go somewhere else don't worry but that's been my dream as of today me and my wife we gave six cars away each car we gave I became a miracle to someone now it might not have been a big deal for me but to that person it was a miracle no wonder I started to experience miracles miracles I mean is when random people you don't know who don't even think about you God tells them the exact amount to give to you and that's exactly what you needed or that's exactly what needed to be done for a particular mission. Or like last year on my birthday, we already gave one car away before my birthday and then I decided to just kind of feel like just grateful to God. I said, Lord, I just feel so grateful. I just want to give one more car away just because it's my birthday. And so I told my wife, she's like, yeah, if you feel it, let's do it. There was only one problem. I just didn't have the money, but I had the desire. And so I already know God in this area really well. So I take risks and I jump without even thinking in this area because I already have a little bit of experience. So what I did is I asked Pastor Martin, I said, Martin, I want you to find me a car. It's within this amount of money. I want you to get me the car and then um, I'll get you the money. So I didn't have the money. He got the car on Friday. I gave it away on Sunday in the sermon. I didn't have the money to pay for it. It was supposed to, we supposed to collect it on Monday. I gave the car away. I was like, Lord, we have about 24 hours. We'll figure this out. People came from different cities on that service. People that I don't know. I didn't know how they knew about my birthday. But it was twice as much as how much the car was given, was given to me in envelopes on that service. Talk about miracle. On Monday, when I got the car, I paid for everything and I stood there and I'm just crying before God. And I was like, Lord, this is so awesome. Let's do it again. He was like, stop. <laughs> and I felt like God was saying, Vlad, I'm so happy that you took the risk and didn't process it through. Because you did not know what's going to happen on Sunday. You just took the risk and you saw my power. God wants to do miracles, not just blessings. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, some of you right now, you're not even at the blessing level. The whole tithing thing is still kind of there. God's going to take you there slowly but surely. And we're gonna address the last point and then we're gonna come to prayer. I want you to write this down. New season, new supply. New season, new supply. I mentioned there is miracles from God. In order to have miracles from God and finances, ask yourself a question. Am I a miracle from God to someone else? Secondly, I want you to mention is that, I want you to write this down, is that God doesn't just want you to work for money. God wants money to work for you. I have to, I know that this may sound like a financial thing. The problem with my generation 
is my generation goes to school goes to college to learn one thing how to work harder at making money that's not how the world works people who actually make a lot of money don't work for their money they have their money work for them Israel did not work for the houses their houses worked for them God wants you to shift your mindset and not to think like an average person that lives in this country God wants you to think like kingdom person which means that you don't buy with your precious money liabilities car is a liability unless you're using it for uber you don't buy things that are toys or buy clothes with money but you buy things that can help you generate money are you with me church when I was 20 years of age you know I wanted to buy a brand new car Toyota Camry from a dealer it was my mistake my bad I heard a preacher who said he always drove cars that had a lot of miles and then he finally got a car that had zero miles the only problem is this preacher was 50 years old and I was 20 so I got this revelation I need a car with zero miles nobody was there to snap it out of me so I went and was about to get a new car and I talked to a person in our church and he said hey listen why don't you use this money to buy a property and let the property buy you a car and this way you got both and you're not paying for neither I said that is a brilliant idea and yes I made a mistake because I bought a new car but I didn't pay for that car I bought a property and the property paid for the car car was paid off I kept the property and eventually we sold that property and gave that money to the missions don't buy things buy assets buy things that can make you money otherwise you're just simply in the same rat race that you're going to be always in amen and then God not only wants us to use our money to work for us but God wants us eventually to make money out of the things we're most passionate about God wants us to profit from our passions what does that mean that means if you do your job but it makes you a lot of money it makes you good money but you hate your job that's not the goal of God for you eventually you have to dream of doing something you love if it's construction if it's painting, if it's music, if it's speaking, if it's whatever it is, you have to aim to eventually do something in life that you're passionate about. Even if it makes you less money than what you have right now. Are you with me? We're going to bring this message to an end. Prosperity comes from work and warfare. Write this down. Prosperity comes from work and warfare. Work is when we work smart and work hard. And warfare is three things. When we tithe, God fights for us by rebuking the devourer when we tithe God also wants to fight in us what does that mean God wants you to fight the negative thoughts of poverty the negative thoughts of lack the negative thoughts I'm not going to make it inside of you and the third thing is God wants to fight through you against every spiritual force every curse that comes against you in your finances yeah. amen? amen amen I want to show you an example of how our finances could be and how they should be spiritual world is real and the devil is interested in keeping the money away from God's people because if you give money to bad people guess what's going to happen human trafficking will happen murder will happen what's going to happen drugs will happen I watched a little segment yesterday on the one of the biggest drug lords in the world who was from Colombia and he was so rich he was making millions and millions of money every single day it was more than any other company in the world at the time and he wasn't doing anything good what he was doing is he was literally selling drugs and killing people he had so much money that he had nowhere to stash them all of his ceilings were full with a hundred dollar bills his couches had all the foam removed and put money there his beds had foam removed and put money there. His mom was complaining because all the couches had hard, instead of uh, soft foam, they had cash on them. You know what he did with that money? He simply paid a million dollars to kill a police officer or an army person. Over 200 people were killed because he paid for it. Human trafficking, drugs, heroin, people got hooked and ruined their lives. Why? Because the guy had money. If he would have no money, he would never be able to do anything without that. I believe devil was sitting there and he was happy that this guy had all the money because he was so messed up in his head. The devil wants bad people to have the money and good people not to have the money. Because if money ends up in your pocket, you're going to pay for people to save people. You're going to sponsor missionaries. 
you're gonna build hospitals you're gonna build orphanages you will pay off this church you will put more people on the staff so we can have more people coming to internship you will sponsor projects that will help people because money in your hands will only advance the kingdom of God I believe in that how do I know that because the money you have right now already are helping other people and God wants that money to come to his children so that on his earth the king his kingdom is spread and that money to be stopped from drug dealers from mafia people and all kinds of bad people and I believe in that in Jesus name that all the people who are using their money to destroy people that they will get stopped and that they will get in jail in Jesus name come on somebody Woo! thank you for watching and listening to this message I know that it's been a blessing to you your faith has been stretched and you've been positioned to receive from God we're about to go into a time of prayer where you will receive prayer for your current situation. I believe God will bring healing and God will bring freedom as you will pray along with us. I'm so excited to announce that I'm actually releasing a book called Break Free, where I will share in the book of what we went through as a church, what I went through as an individual, as a pastor, as a minister, and how to find freedom and how to keep that freedom. And so on the link below, there is a link where you can find promotional material you can share on social media and help to get the word out i would really appreciate that and right now having your heart ready let's go into the time of ministry where you will receive from the lord We thank you, Father, that you're a way maker. Lord, we thank you that you make a way when there is no way. And if you believe that, put your hands together for Jesus this morning. Right now, we're going to pray. And as we pray, I want you to know that you have the authority right now to open. You have the door, the authority to close, to bind and unbind in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, church? Somebody say, I have the authority. I want you to say louder. Say, I have the authority. And right now we're gonna pray just that in Jesus' name. So I want Brian to, Ryan, to put up the first prayer point. And I want you to pray this prayer point with me in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to say, say, I command every closed door up to goodness to be open. Say, I command every closed door to favor to be opened. I want you to say it again. Say, I command every closed door to favor to be opened in my life in my finances in my career in my business in Jesus mighty name come on open up your lips and begin to say that I command every closed door to goodness every closed door to favor every closed door to promotion every closed door to business opportunities in my finances to be open in Jesus name begin to pray that right now I command in the name I command in the name of Jesus, I command the door of favor to open. It is God's will, it is God's promise. It is His promised land for my life. And I'm taking authority and I command the door to open. I command the door of favor to open for me and my
my family, for my business, for my education. I cannot do it with my strength, but I command the door of prosperity. I command the door of favor. I command the door of goodness. I command the blessings of God that God has given me to open now, begin to work in my life. In the name of Jesus, I command every door, every door of blessing to open. Command it right now into your life. Door of blessing, door of favor, open in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the next prayer, we're going to command and we're going to take back every keys to breakthrough that was stolen by sin, that was taken by sin. And see, sin is a, in its nature, it takes. In its nature, it steals from us. So when we allow sin into our life, it begins to rob us of our blessings and breakthrough that God has for us. But in this prayer, we're going to take back all the keys of breakthrough that Satan has taken from our lives. And we're going to take it back in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Church, if you can put up the second prayer point, And if you can say with me, church, say, I take all the keys of breakthrough that's been stolen from me by sin say I take it back say I take it back say I take it back say my breakthrough in my finances say I take it back breakthrough in my marriage say I take it back breakthrough in my health I take it back breakthrough in my career I take it back in Jesus' name. Right now in this prayer, begin to take back every keys of breakthrough that's been stolen through sin in your life, that's been stolen by Satan and demons in your life. Begin to command it right now. I take it back in Jesus' mighty name. I take back my marriage. I take back my career. I take back my blessings. I take back my breakthrough in my finances. You have the power of life and death in your tongue, in your mouth. Right now, begin to release it. Begin to release it for your breakthrough, for your blessing. Begin to command that spirit that stole from your life to release a breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Come on, open your mouth. Command it right now. Open your mouth. Fight for your own blessing. Fight for what God has given you and command the keys of blessing to come. I command in the name of Jesus Christ the keys of blessing that God has given to me. I take them in the name of Jesus. Everything the devil stole I take back those keys. I take back the keys of prosperity. I take back the keys of good marriage. I take back the keys of good of being a good parent. I take back the keys of being a good husband, a good father. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those keys to come. In Jesus' mighty name, I will prosper. The promised land is for me. The promised land is the will of God. In and right Jesus now, I take mighty the keys. name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, the Bible says that we have a victory in Jesus. And the Bible says that our enemy is real and that nobody can plunder a strong man's house until you bind a strong man. And maybe you got bound by the strong man of fear and the strong man of worry right now. And like that snake, he got your finances tied up. He got your money tied up. And right now, this is what you're doing. You may say, man, this is just different. This is what this is, is you are breaking away from every snake of anxiety, from every snake of fear, from every generational curses of failure and poverty and lack in your finances in Jesus' mighty name. I want you to put up the third prayer point. And right now, we're just going to take authority and command every weapon and every evil design against you to fail today the devil wants you to fail but today we're gonna reverse the role so we're gonna say devil you fail you fail in, a, in against me you fail in attacking me you fail the bible says no weapon formed against you will prosper that means the devil is gonna fail that means the devil is gonna be the loser not you somebody say amen say this say this with me say every weapon an evil design against me and my finances fail totally in Jesus name say weapon against me and my finances fail today fail right now in Jesus name right now open up your lips and begin to speak failure into the camp of the enemy 
begin to speak that no weapon formed against you will prosper everything satan is planning on the road to cause an accident begin to say i cancel that right now in jesus name everything satan plans to bring a sickness into your body so you go financial problems begin to say i cancel right now every plan of the enemy to attack me with sickness i cancel every plan of the enemy to attack me with the with poverty to attack me with the mental breakdown to attack me with disease to attack me with limitation to attack me with stagnation i cancel that assignment right now i cancel that plan right now i cancel that weapon in jesus mighty name say this with me say every weapon and every evil design against me let it fail totally today in jesus name say no weapon formed against me come on place your hand on yourself say formed against me will prosper say i'm a winner say you devil you're a loser you're a loser you're a failure i'm a winner in jesus christ come on right now open up your lips declare your business is a winner declare your career is a winner declare right now that your side job is a winner declare right now that your investments are the winner and the devil is losing and the king the steve the thief the killer and the destroyer is losing in jesus mighty name come on open up your lips declare that over your life decree that over your life right now in jesus mighty name in jesus mighty yes, name. father we begin to declare that father we are winners father in everything that we do that as your word says everything that my hand touches will prosper lord that i am blessed in the city and i am blessed on the field i am blessed in my house and i am blessed in my workplace i am blessed in my career i am blessed in my business lord that i will succeed in everything that i do in jesus mighty name we pray let's put up the next point right now we're gonna come against every evil attack of the enemy you know what we're gonna say that every situation that threatens my place to be disconnected in jesus mighty name enemy spends no time planning against us that's why we should spend more time in praying against his schemes and against his enemy. He wants you to go to your workplace and be late so you can be fired. He wants you to go in your car, drive and get a ticket, get an accident. He wants you to fall and slip and hurt yourself that you spend money in the medical bills. But every plan that the enemy has placed will fail today in Jesus mighty name. I want you to repeat after me say that situation. I want you to say it louder, that situation that threatens my peace be disconnected in Jesus mighty name come on open up your lips begin to pray begin to say every plan every situation that threatens my peace my joy my finances be disconnected in Jesus mighty name be disconnected from my life from my marriage from my family from my career and everything that has to do with me in Jesus mighty name be disconnected right now in Jesus mighty name in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and right now in this last prayer point I want us to declare and say that whatever my blessing have been scattered whether on the east on the west on the north or south right now I'm gathering my blessings I'm gathering my blessings because Jesus said he who's with me he gathers today I believe that Spirit of God is with us you are walking with the Spirit of God you are together in partnership with God and he who is in partnership with God gathers and not scatters Jesus said those that are not with me scattering but today we are together in partnership with Almighty God in Jesus mighty name say with me whatever my blessings have been scattered whether the east or west or south or north today I command it to be gathered in my place in my bank account in my business in my health in my marriage to be gathered together to be gathered together to every blessing that's been scattered I command you to come together to come together in Jesus name right now begin to recount every blessing that's been scattered in your life and beginning to command it 
to be scattered in Jesus mighty name to be gathered together in Jesus mighty name whatever it might be maybe your marriage has been scattered maybe your finances your business been scattered right now commanded by the word of your mouth because there is authority to be gathered open up your lips begin to pray for your business your marriage your health begin to pray for your career and commanded to be gathered together in a place of blessings in Jesus mighty name in the name of Jesus I command everything that Satan has stolen to come back I command everything that Satan has attacked all the time all the money that is scattered I command it to come back in the name of Jesus Christ every blessing that God wanted me to have but the devil stole I command it to come back in Jesus name I command it to, to gather together all my blessings my anointings my, my blessing my faith my prayer life I command it to gather in the name of Jesus come on what has the devil stolen from you command it to come back now I command my family time my good marriage I command it to come back I command the time with my children to come back I command my finances to come back I command my education to come back every last thing every last dollar every last blessing the Satan is scattered today I command it to gather in my account Jesus, Jesus mighty name we declare and decree miracle money to show up in your mailbox in Jesus name we declare and decree unexpected pleasant surprises in your mailbox and in your text message in your cash app in your PayPal in your square we declare that this will be a week of God's blessings with whole promotions are going to be released in Jesus name we declare that those of you who are looking for a job that this week you will be able to have an interview and that you will have that job in Jesus name for those of you who are looking for a better job that there will be open door to that in Jesus mighty name for those of you who have tried trauma and trauma at your office space and that is going to stop this week for those of you who have nightmares that you cannot pay pay your bills and have fears we cancel that right now in Jesus name every anxiety associated with money we cancel that every anxiety associated with marital conflict we cancel that in Jesus name for those of you who had fear of tithing fear of giving and greed we cancel that right now let this be the week where you take the new step in your new season and you become generous and you become a giver you become an investor and you become the person that enjoys and sees the favor of God in Jesus mighty name thank you for watching this content I hope this was a blessing to you if you're like me and you like to click on things click on this subscribe to our channel and the content will come to you every time we post it and remember the best is yet to come